Hi, guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jessica Likewise, and I'm the CEO of Hope Education Services. I recently took my BCBA exam after 13 years of the field, so I had a little bit of a late start. Well, I'm really passionate about helping other people pass their exam because I know how challenging it can be, especially when you're trying to navigate life. You have friends, families, careers, spouses, school, aging parents, dogs, and pets, and you're trying to fit studying in on top of that. So we're making videos just for you. So as you're going back and forth to work, as you're making dinner, you can study for your BCBA exam. So I'm really excited that I partnered with Dr. Catherine May. We're gonna be making some videos together. And also we have some exciting news about a course that we're gonna be putting out just for you. Today, we're gonna to talk about the difference between response generalization and stimulus generalization. So stay tuned. And I'm gonna welcome Dr. Dr. Catherine May on in just a second and we'll get started on the video. Hey guys, and welcome back. Like I said, today I'm going to be working with Dr. Catherine May. We're going to be discussing the difference between response generalization and stimulus generalization. So we're both going to really dive into this topic for you. So first I want to welcome Dr. Catherine. Thanks for being here today. And I'm so excited to be having you on my channel for the first time. I took your course, your all day ABA um, marathon when I was studying for my exam and I found it super helpful. So I'm so glad to be working with you so we can help even more people pass their exam. Oh, absolutely. It's an honor to work with you as well. Awesome. So one of the number one questions that I get is what's the difference between response generalization and stimulus generalization? Actually, even today, a friend of mine who's studying for her exam, you know, she said she can recite the definition, but sometimes when you, even if you know the definition according to the book, it's not always easy to apply into a real life situation. So, you know, for you, when you think about response and stimulus generalization, what should be, people be really focused on when they're trying to understand the difference? All right, so if you want to dive into response generalization and stimulus generalization, there is a magic key word that I always like to throw in there, and that word is multiple. So if you have multiple responses, you're going to know that it's response generalization. If you have multiple stimuli and one response, then it's stimulus generalization. So for example, if I have an apple, a banana, and a pear, and I take a bite of each one, that's going to be stimulus generalization because I have multiple stimuli, but there's one response. Whereas with response generalization, let's say I have a bottle of wine, which is my all-time favorite. I can either open it up with a wine bottle opener, I can crack it open with a knife, or I can hand it to my boyfriend to open it for me. So that is one stimulus, which is my bottle of wine, and three different responses, multiple responses. Yeah, I love that. And it's funny because the term, the word I always like to look at, and it's similar, but I want to give people two ways is like, well, which changes? And that's what I always ask people is like, well, which one changes? And someone sent me a mock question even today, where it was someone was saying the word please and being polite in multiple environments. And, you know, I'm like, well, what changed when they were in school or when they were in the library, when they were in home, were they saying something different? Did the response change or did the, where they were changed? And I think that can be something that confuses a lot of people too. Cause sometimes, like you said, we think about um, stimulus generalization as just being like a physical stimulus. Like I'm either drinking from the water um, bottle or I'm drinking from the cup or this is, um, this is, this is new. This is actually a seltzer, not beer. It's interesting, but it comes <laughs> from a really cool bottle, right? I could be drinking from this. Well, you know, these are, we think about stimulus generalization as in like the actual physical thing changing, but it also could be the person that you're doing the behavior with. Right. And that can also be stimulus generalization. It also can be where you're doing the behavior. So it's really just what is changing. Is the behavior changing or is the person, place, the thing that you're using or engaging with changing? Absolutely. And I love that. I think that's a great example because you're right. There's a lot of mock questions out there that kind of give you a little run for your money. No, because you do want to keep in mind that it, it doesn't just have to be physical stimuli, right? You can be in different settings um, with different people and you're still focusing on stimulus generalization. Whereas if you have multiple responses, right? Many ways to respond to something, um, then you know automatically you have response generalization. Yeah, perfect. I love that. So, you know, I hope that us working together to bring you two different kind of perspectives of the same topic. You know, for me, I like to think of the word different and, you know, um, Catherine likes to think of the word multiple, you know, whichever works for you. But just know, like I said, if it is the response that's changing, it's response generalization. If it's the stimulus that's changing, it's stimulus generalization. So I really hope this video has helped you. You know, we really want to help you pass your exam. I love 
working with kids. And you know, one of the questions I get, because I do a lot of personal work on myself and my business, is if you got a million dollars tomorrow, you know, would you, what would you do? Like, would you retire from your career? Would you change what you do? Would you quit your business, quit your job? And I wouldn't. I love what I do. I mean, I might take a really nice vacation, <laughs> but, but I love what I do. I wouldn't stop doing something. I wouldn't stop. I wouldn't do something different because I didn't need to. I get up every day and I choose to do this. And I think a lot of people in our field, they do this because they choose to. They do this because they want to make people's lives better. They want to impact the world of autism. They want to really help kids be the best version of themselves. And then there's this big test that's in the way of that. And sometimes really amazing therapists with beautiful hearts are just not good test takers. And that exam can be a barrier between you living into your purpose and getting to fulfill the life that you want to live and you not being able to do that. And you know, we just wanna help you and support you in your journey to make sure you get to live your best life and you get to live into your purpose. So we put together a course for you. Um, it is currently in pre-sale if you're watching this video when it's actually been posted. We have an incredibly special offer. Um, you're never gonna see uh, this an offer like this again. It's literally, we're just giving away um, mentoring and coaching. I mean, we're going to be offering you for literally less than 50 cents an hour of the ability to actually work with us one on one, which is crazy. Um, it's just literally, it's a gift to you. So if you want to learn more about that, check out tasklist, tasklist5.com. Um, it is going to be based on the fifth edition because we're approaching the change between four and five, just like we're approaching the cooler weather. We're going to be now shifting from the Tasklist 4 to Tasklist 5. So check it out. You can be among the first to be joining our elite group, our elite private coaching group, where you can literally work with us for under 50 cents an hour, which is basically free. So have an amazing day. If you want to reach either one of us, I'm going to have the link to both of our websites in the comments below. If you have a question, just literally write it right as a comment on this YouTube channel, and we'd be happy to get your question answered in our next video. Thanks for being here. And uh, Dr. Catherine, I look forward to working together and helping lots of people together. Absolutely. I absolutely can't wait. And it's been such an honor so far. So, and I couldn't have said it better myself. You know, we are genuinely here with our full hearts full and we just want to see everyone succeed and we're going to collaborate together to hopefully do that. Awesome. Well, guys, we look forward to working with you and thanks for checking out our video.